in this video I'll try to explain how L8148E Aquastat is working. This is for gas boilers, gas burners rather than oil. This is the first video and I'll try in the other videos I'll try to go deeper than just uh, functionality of the Aquastat. But here it says maximum load can be 7.4 amp. This is basically applies to the pumps, a circulator pump. But what we have here is really basics of this Aquastat will be, here's the transformer that gives 24 volts. Here is the relay that gets pulled in when there is call for heat. This pulls in and then signal is sent to the burners. So burner is B1 and B2. It says here it's a burner. First it's sent to the vent damper. In this case we have a vent damper, 24 volt vent damper. That's where it it, the signal is sent to the damper. Once damper opens up, the micro switch makes connection and then signal is sent to the burners. Well, before that happens, that signal has to go through this aquastat itself. But I'll get back to this in a moment. Uh, let's assume that this goes through and then it sends signal to the burners. So 24 volts goes to the burner. At the same time, when this is pulled in, 120 volt goes to C1 and C2, the circulator pump. And there is the last connection here. Well, it's not the last, but one of the connections, L1 and L2. Obviously, L1 is 120. L2 is neutral. On, on top, we have W and T and TV. Right? This is for the thermostat. This is for the thermostat here. Now, as far as this section here is the aquastat. What the aquastat is basically a temperature sensor. So that is connected to this one goes inside the boiler. So it's inside the boiler and it's sensing the temperature. As far as I know, and I'm not 100% positive, there is some sort of refrigerant in it. That refrigerant expands and contracts based on heat. Some sort of refrigerant. It might not be refrigerant, but some sort of uh, chemical that expands and contracts. And here, there is a switch. It pushes the switch and closes or opens these contacts right here, these contacts. This is also where we can set what temperature we want. 200 and 220, and there is also 240, and that's it. On the low end, we have 180, which you said most of the Aquastats 180, 190, something like that. You don't want to set 200 or more because you're going to generate steam. The boiler is going to run too hot. And then there is, I believe, 140. That's the lowest it can go. Um, in this video, I'm not going into the details of the Aquastat, how it functions. But in the future videos, I'll try to actually fire this up. I mean, turn it on and then follow the signals. I know on this specific Aquastat, the reason I replaced this one was this connection here for the vent damper would not make connection to the board. That's what fails in these Aquastats. There are two things that fail on this Aquastat. Number one is this connection right here. And number two, there is, a, there is some sort of fuse here, F1. And I can't say 100% if this is fuse or uh, the diode at the same time some sort of uh, I probably I'm, I'm probably gonna deep dive in it because if aquastat fails two things fail here either this one or this one I've seen transformers failed I've seen the relay contacts failed 
because these contacts here got gets pitted and they fail and that's normal but all the aquastats I have in the shop either this is loose or this one is blown I'm gonna open up in a moment to see the back side since this is the first video so I can just take a take a look on the back side and all I have to do here is just open these tabs those four tabs once I open these four they should come off fairly easy there's this ground screw here that's on the way let me put this ground screw down all right in this case we know that's the problem here this connection Interesting, this is actually so loose. No, no it, it's, it's right here. That's, that's the one, not the other one. This is just a screw. All right, so that's what the sensor looks like. This is a temperature sensor, basically. Senses the temperature. That's what opens and closes the switch on the other end. Other connections, all the connections look good, except I don't know what happens with this specific area here, this area, that's what gives gives you the trouble. Temporarily, if you want to give it, if you want to make the Aquastat work again, you can do this temporarily. And I'll show you here in a moment how you can do it. Um, let me put this in. Okay, this place. Okay. All right, if you basically take a wire knot or something and just put it here like this, pushing this connector down, it, it will probably going to make it work. But it's temporary. It, it can't, can't be fixed, obviously. All right, I'm going to put these tabs back on. This is, the again, first video. Hopefully, we're going to have more videos coming out and getting more details about the functions and um, how this exactly works how it does its job thanks for watching please subscribe and like that helps a lot to the youtube algorithm so when other people can also see these videos thank you